basically the way I look at beekeeping is that we're here to support them and to help them do what they normally what they mm -hmm. naturally do so as far as what a beekeeper does is we provide them a house a home in a yard that supposedly has good forage around it so they can eat food water nectar that they need um, and then to monitor them periodically for disease just like you would a household pet there is no routine in beekeeping so just wanted to sort of dis dispel that a little bit um, it's always going to change depending on the season it's going to change depending on the weather there are a lot of things that are going to influence beekeeping what you do when you do it and how you do it i can literally tell you the day it was april 27th when i first noticed black locust tree blooms and, and it's like i i just I, I like knowing that where i'm always looking for it and i'm always monitoring the weather and like it, it's it's kind of beekeepers understand it so we're very busy from say march up through now uh, because that's the season when the bees are reproducing the most. That's the season when they're bringing in nectar to make honey. So we're managing that and that's the season when they tend to be, uh, th there are diseases and insects. And it's seasonally, um, winter is the down season. The bees, they don't hibernate, but they stay clustered. So they're in the hive, they just shiver and, and ball up around the queen, keep her warm and alive all winter. The real activity starts in the spring. She'll begin laying eggs by the thousands, and she'll build up. The colony will go from 30,000 bees to 90,000 by the time we're in full bloom. Bees have a queen um, who lays all the eggs in the hive, and then there are worker bees that do many different tasks in the hive, and then there are drone bees who have just one task, um, which is to uh, impregnate a queen at some point and they need all those bees to collect as much nectar as they possibly can, they're natural hoarders. They will fill up all the frames with nectar and ripen it into honey so they have food for the winter. They are fairly resilient. Um, they can live in most environments other than the Arctic um, for obvious reasons. But, um, you know, temperate environments such as this, you know, environments where you have mixed seasons, they do well in tropical environments. So, I mean, there, there are very few places that bees can't survive and thrive, and typically what will happen is each successive generation will be tweaked a little bit to make them more um, sustainable within that environment. The biggest thing is inspections. You keep an eye on them. Um, there are, when you go into, a, every beekeeper who goes into the hive is looking for usually three to four things. The first thing is, is your queen, is the, is the, is the hive colony queen right? So is there evidence? Most times you won't see the queen. She doesn't like the light. She usually will go down deep. She'll keep moving away from you as you open up the frame. So you look for evidence of her. Are there eggs? Are there larvae? If there are, then you know things are looking good and, and everybody is, is happy. You also look for queen cups and queen cells, evidence that the workers may or may not be making a new queen. Beekeepers monitor the hives they may feed them at certain times of the year and they also these days um, have to administer treatment to keep things like mite levels down but it's a it's a mite that originated in southeast asia just like all honeybees did in southeast asia and then now it's managed to you know it made its way over to the bees in america in the 80s and has it's just spread like wildfire here because its natural host is honeybees it only ever lives in honeybee colonies so and that transmits lots of viruses, and it also just generally weakens the health of the honeybees. Um, the next thing you look for is the, the health, general activity of the, of the bees. Are they all moving around? Do they look healthy? Do you see mites? Hopefully not. And, um, and then you look for food stores. Do they have enough um, space and food? Is there enough space for them to keep laying eggs or storing honey? And uh, do they have enough honey for the particular season that they're going into fall? You want them to have tons of food. In the spring, it's okay if there's not much food, they're about to collect it all. And our two biggest things are the smoker, which drives the bees down into the hive, so you don't have to work with your hands quite as much in the bees, and your hive tool, which is what you use to pry the frames up and break the boxes open. They're not native to the Western Hemisphere at all, honeybees. Um, so they were brought over here in the 1600s by the, the white settlers, you know, from Europe, and they, they're incredibly good agricultural pollinators mostly because they live in such large colonies. Like per capita, they're not necessarily better than other native bees, but they live in colonies of tens of thousands. So they're way more powerful for pollinating stuff. 
bees are vital for pollinating all the food that we eat um, in the almonds in, in the Central Valley of California. One and a half million hives are brought in in February from around the country to pollinate almonds. It's also needed just to keep the, everything that you see around you going. Even though the trees, not every tree produces a fruit, every tree produces seeds. And you, in order to get a seed, you need it to be pollinated. So to keep all the greenery that we see around it, bees or some sort of pollinator is necessary. What people can do to help out bees at home is to plant pollinator-friendly plants, like milkweed, uh, tulip poplar trees are wonderful. I like places that are wild, but you could be in your own backyard because there's plenty of forage all through your neighborhood. And also buying local, so buying local honey, buying local um, bee products, that also helps to really um, sustain and, and keep beekeepers you know, and being able to do the, the things that we love to do. I do take it really seriously because I do really love beekeeping and I love watching the bees pollinate the flowers. Let the clover grow in your grass a little bit. A few dandelions in the spring is good. Let them, let them do that. The more food we can give to them, the better. Food and water. Occasionally, people who have swimming pools, you'll see them feed in the pool and they'll let them take the water and then, then be off. And so that kind of, we can just take care of them that way. It's, and just kind of, in, I would say the big thing is in, don't be afraid of them enjoy them. If you don't bother them, they won't bother you, but you don't always have to get the raid out and kill every flying thing that comes into your yard. Yeah. <laughs>